And now for an episode that will take us to the place beyond places. What happens to us when we cease to be? When those sparks in our brain all shut off and that black spot emerges on the MRI scan showing brain death? What happens after that? Well, the religions of the world teaches us that we meet some kind of creator, and um, the religions all can't seem to agree about who that is. Some religions state that a big man with a gray beard made the universe. Others that it was a man with four arms that created the universe. And some that a spaghetti person made the universe. Almost every religion agrees that there is some sort of an afterlife, whether it be Valhalla, Heaven, Olympus, call it whatever you will. And on this episode, I thought I'd take a look at what this afterlife might be like, and how it might work. And I don't want anyone getting offended down in the comments. Believe me, all this is just for fun. It's all just speculative. But if you don't think you're going to get offended, go ahead and keep watching. And just don't kill me or send me hate mail or anything like that. Follow the smiley face. The smiley face says, be happy. Be happy. But a lot of you didn't notice that before. It's, I noticed it from the first episode. I just thought I was waiting for somebody to to bring it up in the comments. Mark Twain wrote in one of his books, I believe it was Letters from the Earth, that he didn't believe people like Jesus Christ and Adam and Eve would go around comforting people and uh, spending time with them after they died. And his idea was that he, they just there'd be so many of those people that they just wouldn't be able to get to them all. And Mark Twain might be right, but I always like this idea by C.S. Lewis. C.S. Lewis saw our creator as a writer who could jot down ideas, maybe prayers, and then come back to it. Therefore, while it might seem like an eternity to us, for the creator, he would have all the time in the world to answer our prayers. And I always like this thought. I also always like this thought that the mind of heaven might be like this computer brain that could go through data at like super speeds. So, um, I don't know. I don't know who I'm going to offend more on this episode. Atheist or people that believe in God? Um, probably both. Where exactly is heaven? Now, there are a lot of theories about this, and I'd ask all of you not to sneeze at any of them, because I personally think they all have their own value. Some people say that heaven might be its own world. Other people say that it, it's in some parallel dimension. Still others say that it might be some part of the Big Bang, some numerical concept or something. And, and others say that it's just something that's incomprehensible to the human mind and we're just not able to understand. And chances are that's probably the right one. But I do kind of like the parallel dimension one because, you know, it'd be kind of cool because we're already figuring out about parallel dimensions and then all, all that stuff would link up together. But again, you know, I, I don't really know. So thank you all for not sneezing at that idea, because I know how people, if they don't like an idea, they'll just <coughs> sneeze at it. Puh, puh, to your idea. Puh. One fear I think people have about heaven is, I mean, it doesn't seem to be a place that allows individuality much. I mean, everyone's basically just perfect, and it wouldn't seem that anyone had any choice, you know? No one was allowed freedom. And... I, this is the way that I've always liked to look at it. Maybe everyone is all good, but that doesn't mean that they are necessarily all alike. I mean, maybe they're all good in different ways. And maybe people just in heaven discover their own true selves. Maybe this version of us is a lie, and in the true world, we're all just all good. I guess it doesn't, there's a lot of mystery about it, but I guess there really isn't any answers either. It's just a matter of viewpoint, I guess. The question that's always bothered me about heaven is, if heaven is housing all the people that are dying right now, and also all the people that have died in the past, wouldn't it be overcrowded? I mean, you would think that the streets of heaven would be filled. 
And what's always bothered me about this question is that, to me, it seems like there's a pretty obvious answer. I mean, if our universe is as big as it is, I mean, infinite in size, then heaven must be even bigger, and it's probably even more hospitable to life. So, and, oh, and also you have to take into account that not all human beings are going to heaven. I mean, some of us, you know, are going, are going to hell. Okay, so this next one um, deals with a big idea. Actually, probably the biggest idea that you can have. And I'm going to do my best to make this as simple as possible. So, a question that people have about heaven is, how can a place like this exist? How can a place that is all perfect and all good be real? And I think the problem with this question is we're always viewing it um, from the perspective of a human being on Earth. And what you've got to remember is that how does our universe really exist? I mean, a place where everything makes sense and that some people are good or some people are bad, people in heaven probably wouldn't believe in such a place either. And just to make sure that you all understand, I, I, I'm going to give you all an example. Say that you were a fish swimming through the ocean and your name was Tootsie. And you run into this dolphin named Big Daddy D. Now you the fish happen to know of this world of people that walk on the surface and things that breathe air and tell the dolphin. Now, Big Daddy D listens to you, and he says, you're nuts. This idea goes far beyond the scope of his little dolphin mind. Furthermore, he might tell you that a world like that just wouldn't make sense, and that you should just be happy with a world as beautiful as theirs. And you would also probably be sent to a little fish asylum and be put in a little fish straight jacket and have an octopus come in and shock you all the time. And I, I, I've gotten a little carried away with this example, I apologize. You know, I'm not sure if I'd really do very well in heaven. I mean, I was thinking about it, and I don't really think that I look very good in a dress. I mean, you've, you've all seen me before in, in past episodes. And, and not only that, but, you know, I don't really know how to play the harp, and I, I don't really like harp music all that much, and I can't imagine me just sitting on a cloud playing the harp all day and singing. It'd just, it'd just kind of be boring. I guess I would like flying, though. That'd be pretty cool. I could fly around with my wings, and maybe God would give me a jetpack instead. I'd be the, the only angel soaring around on a jetpack. Yeah, 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 I, I could get into that. I, I, you know what? Heaven might be really awesome, actually.